<laughs> hey, Barrett, it is good to see you on this Friday. Let me ask you, where where are you right now? I am, I would say, usually I would say I'm just down the road from you, but I am right here in Austin, Texas. All right. Yeah. Well, I am in Cleveland, Ohio, which yep. you and I both are kind of from Ohio. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. I'm visiting my parents right now for the weekend. Uh, many of you have probably heard of Ann and Essie. Um, they're, they're fantastic people and I'm so lucky to have them as my parents. Um, so, but Carrie, we're not here to talk about our parents. We're here today to talk about <laughs> exercise, why, why we love exercise so much, why it shouldn't be something that you at home dread, but something that you absolutely enjoy. Exercise can be fun. Don't you think? It can be, it can be, but I can tell you too, I understand the hurdle of it, uh, of getting over that. Ugh, I don't want to do this, but, uh, it, it can be the biggest joy of your life. And, and I am going to admit it's my job to convince people of that today. Right. Right. And you know, everybody, please put in the chat room where you're, where you're uh, joining us from. And thank you for joining us, uh, on this, this Friday afternoon. So Lori, speaking of, you know, uh, somebody that used to dread it. You know, we have people that come to our immersions and they say, Rip, the thought of exercise makes me want to take a nap. Um, so how, like you, to me, are the perfect example of somebody that maybe used to be a couch potato, but has now embraced all of the wonderful aspects of exercise and what it can do for you and how it's really, I think, enhanced your life and kind of it's 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 kind of transformed and made you into the new Carrie Barrett. <laughs> I mean, not only has it enhanced my life, it has it has created my life, quite honestly. I mean, 25 years ago, if, if I would have if you would have told me that I would be sitting here talking about exercise, I would have like put my cigarette out, put my beer down and said, <laughs> you're right. Okay. Um, <laughs> but um, yes. Yeah, so as you mentioned, I, I am from Ohio originally. I'm from Columbus and I grew up with four big brothers. So I'm the youngest of five and I'm the only girl. And so I was always very athletic. You know, I had no choice. I, I had to be, I had to play with the boys and keep up with the boys. And, and so I was always a tomboy and, you know, when they're out playing football, I was out playing football, but we also grew up on the very convenient standard American diet, or as I like to jokingly saw it, like the standard Midwestern diet. So with five kids coming and going, my parents did the best they could with what they had. And so that actually included a lot of hot dogs, a lot of macaroni and cheese. Uh, I ate, I remember vividly eating cinnamon toast crunch for breakfast almost every day. Uh, if there was a vegetable, it was, we opened a can of corn threw it in the, you know, on the stove and, and put that next to our hot dog. And so that was like our idea of vegetable, maybe some iceberg lettuce, but of course we drowned it in ranch dressing because that's what you do in the Midwest. And, uh, so never established any healthy tips. Even in high school, I played field hockey and basketball. And after class in high school, we would walk to the Taco Bell or the McDonald's shovel down I don't know, seven, 800 calories of nasty food. And then we would go back to school and practice for an hour and a half. And I remember vividly feeling disgusting and lethargic, but it was just the trap that I was in. And I, and at the, that age, I wasn't correlating health with fitness or longevity yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, this continued through, through college and I worked in radio at the time and it's a fun business to be in, Rip, but it is what? not a healthy business to be in. <laughs> so I'm going to concerts. You know, I was the marketing director of a bunch of radio stations. So I would have to take people backstage and hang the banners and, and entertain clients and things like that. So it was super fun when you're in your late 20s and early 30s. But uh again, not a sustainable habit when you yeah. are trying to take care of yourself. And so I ended up, you know, going through a bad breakup. I mean, let's be honest, that's how a lot of weight loss journeys start for people. Um, we go through a little bit of a depression period, 
but it was also at that time when I did start to, you know, go get through that heartbreak that I was like, I have got to make some changes. I have, and I had just moved to, to Austin. I was maybe here for about a year, year and a half. And I needed new friends and I needed to get rid of some of these habits that I had uh, unfortunately had established. And so I joined a running group here in Austin. And when I joined that running group, I was about, um, I was, I would say I was close to about 170 pounds. That's what was I remember. That, was that Gilbert's gazelles? Was that even around back then? It wasn't around back then. I am a part of Gilbert's gazelles now, but this was a group called Austin fit. Oh, yeah. And it was one of the only games in town at the time. Um, and so I joined that running group and I was about 60 or 70 pounds heavier than I am now. Um, hey, Bess, and- Bess, Bess, can we see it before and after? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> she, as she's pulling it up. But as as she's pulling it up. So, yeah, oh. that, that, <laughs> that <laughs> you've never seen that rip. The picture of me on the left uh, oh. where I'm wearing those little overalls. That is me <laughs> when I was driving across the country to move to Texas. So that is me in front of the Graceland entrance because we stopped in Memphis because we had to go visit Graceland. And so that was me, what I looked like uh, in uh, 1998 right. before I moved to Texas or as I was moving to Texas. So to, to say that I understand what people are going through is an understatement. Um, starting that marathon training group was the hardest thing I ever did. In fact, the very first workout I skipped because I was so scared um, that it was a time trial and they made you go run, jog, walk, however you got through it. You had to do like two mile time trial. And that was only so that they could place you in the right pace group. And yeah. it wasn't a test, you know, but of the thousand or so people, no exaggeration that were there, I was so convinced that I was going to come in last place that I just left. I didn't even do the workout. Um, and then I proceeded to beat myself up for the following week. And yeah, well, yeah. Part, it, was, it was part of your journey. And yeah. you know what? And showing up is such an important part of it. And I always find out, I always find that when I show up to something that's scary, right? And I'm able to do it, it, it is the greatest sense of achievement. And you realize so much of the these these uh, things are just there's they're they're delusions that we have in our mind that we need to we need to obliterate right yes. but it's part of it's part of life and yeah. uh, and you you just did it with with spades and look at you now so you're not just like a a, a couch to like a, a a now you know avid runner i mean you've got all kinds of certifications right yeah. 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 I mean, I, of course, finished crossing the finish line of that, of that very first marathon. Yeah. Even though it was like, it was close to five hours. It wasn't a fast marathon. Certainly wasn't a Boston qualifier, but, but it, but it was, it's still probably one of my proudest achievements ever. And, uh, it changed everything for me because it really did make me feel like I could do anything. And, you know, no one got me out of bed on Saturday mornings to go run except me. No one forced me to go run hills. It was, this was everything that I was doing. And, uh, you know, I had some false starts along the way, but it, it, it paid off. And so, yeah, that was in 2002 that I did that first marathon. And since then I, um, you know, have gone on in, you know, in the light of Rip Esselstyn, like I've gone on to participate in multiple triathlons, um, seven Ironmans. And then I went on to get my coaching certifications in both USA triathlon and in, uh, you know, and in Ironman. So I have spent many years coaching athletes of all levels to cross their own first finish lines. Wow. Yeah. I love it. And here's the thing for anybody that's sitting there thinking that I'm just not a I just don't like exercise. I don't like to move. It's just not in my DNA. I would tell you that physical activity, specifically robust physical activity, it's encoded in all of our DNAs. It's an important part of who we are. It's an important part to me of you being truly the best version of yourself. And, you know, this, I may be dating myself here, but you remember a guy, um, uh, uh, Carrie named Jack LaLanne. 
Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I remember seeing the commercials. Well, Jack yeah. Lane, you know, back in the day, he was trying to get people to, you know, get physically active and lift weights and do all that. And he was told by all these experts that it was bad for your heart, bad for your health, that, you know, exercise. But he used to say that, you know, um, eating healthy is king or queen. I don't, I don't, we don't need to arm wrestle about that. Right. But eating healthy is, is queen. Exercise is king and combine the two and you have a health kingdom. Mm -hmm. And today, so many Americans today, they're only doing, well, really, they're not, they're not really doing either one. They don't know what it means to eat healthy, unfortunately. They think they're eating healthy, but we all know what it means to eat healthy, and that's a whole food plant-based. And then most people were couch potatoes, were sedentary. And in fact, I want to point to a study um, that really um, portrays this. And this is from the Kaiser Family Foundation. And this study found that the average American youth in America spends a seven and a half hours a day in front of a screen and just seven minutes outside moving. I mean, wow. how, what, how do you react to that? I mean, actually, my first reaction was, I know you say American youth. And my first reaction was, I bet that that's also American adults as well. I mean, how attached to our screens are we, even as adults? Uh, whether or not you scroll social media or so much, so many of us work from home now. And, and I know I'm in front of my laptop eight hours a day. So I get it. Like it's, it's, it's shocking and yet not surprising. Well, you're, you're exactly right. And unfortunately it seems like for many people, I mean, the reason why I pinpoint the, uh, the kids there is because I think of most kids is being supremely active and running around and doing all kinds of activity for adults. Yeah, you're right. I bet you it's, it's, it's three and a half minutes, right? Yeah. If that, yeah. but I say that because it seems like the only time that we're on our feet as adults these days is when we're looking for a new place to sit. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, like even when I started my health journey, I absolutely now uh, agree that Diet and exercise are one and the same and they go hand in hand. But even when I first started exercising, that was not the start of my plant strong journey by any stretch of the imagination. I did not come to find uh, this this way of eating until your book came out in 2009. So, you know, I'm talking like seven, eight year gap in between when I first crossed that finish line of my marathon to when I actually, I think, really took control of my health. And, and added and really focused on the diet component for, for performance in 2009, because I was still doing these great races and I was having fun and I was doing well. And, but, but I went to the doctor in late 2008, just for my annual checkup. And they, they did the blood draw and my cholesterol was like 280. And, um, and I do have extremely high HDLs, like my HDLs are triple digits at all times. So, but my LDL and my triglycerides were still high and it does run in my family. There is a genetic component of high cholesterol, but I was like 35 or 36 at the time. And so my, my primary care physician here in Austin, he, he essentially gave me two options. He was like, one, we can put you on a statin and, or two, have you thought about becoming more vegetarian? And I laughed in his face. Wait, wait, what, <laughs> like, what year was this? What year was this? That would have been 2008. When, okay, so, uh, so this is what drew you basically to my first book. It, your book coincided, the release of Engine 2 yeah. Diet coincided with me finally going, all right, I don't want to be on a statin. What can I do? Yeah. And I had been hearing about you, Rip, because we ran in the same sort of athletic circles. We just, our paths had never crossed physically. And and so I grabbed the Engine 2 book and I started to see all these names of people that you referenced that, that I was friends with. And, you know, Jack Murray and, and uh, Elizabeth Krutz. And I mean, there's a lot of names yeah. in that book that I was like, oh, I know these people. I respect these people. And they're at the top of their game. So let me give this a shot. And so I. And then, for, you, came, and then you came to one of our potlucks. Yep. In yep. my in my backyard back back in probably 2010, and that was that was really fantastic. But Carrie, I I, I want to make sure that so as the backdrop to this whole conversation that Carrie 
and I are having with you today about exercise, Carrie and I want to share with you something that is really exciting that might help you get off that couch, get out there and be part of a really fantastic, robust community that really values not only eating plant strong, but also moving our bodies and all the reasons why we want to move our bodies to be the best version of ourselves. So Carrie, would you mind letting them know about what we have going on with the launch of Team Plant Strong? I am so excited about this. Selfishly, I cannot even begin to tell you how many years this has been, not only in my brain, but in the works for Plant Strong in general. And, and I came to eventually, you know, the fast forward version of our story, Rip, is that I came to work for you five about five years ago uh, as part of the Plant Strong team. And it's been the, the joy and privilege of my life. And this is just the next iteration of that. So Team Plant Strong is our way of bringing a large community of people together to celebrate the fact that we fuel our bodies with plants in any athletic endeavor that we do. And I contend that if you move your body on purpose, you are an athlete. Mm. It doesn't matter what finish line you are crossing or striving to cross. It doesn't even matter if you race or not. If you move your body with intention, that makes you an athlete. And we want to celebrate that. Um, there is a there is a movement across the country, and I shouldn't say movement, there's a group across the country called Team Beef. All oh, right. I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. And I see them at races all the time. And I love it when I run past them wow. uh, and give them a little pat on the butt and say, well done. Uh, I'll see you at the finish. Um, <laughs> but I so Team Plan Strong, we kicked it off about two weeks ago. And it is our chance to bring athletes around the world together to run either virtually or in person a 5K, a half marathon, or a full marathon. And we are kicking it off in person in both of our hometowns here in Austin, Texas on February 19th, 2023. Now, you can run it here in Austin with us, and we hope that you do, because I can promise you we're going to have a party to end all parties. We're going to do a pre-race dinner celebration with our whole team. We've got some guest speakers lined up, some inspirational speakers lined up. And then afterwards, when you cross that finish line, Rip is going to be there to high five you. And we're going to have a wonderful tent at the finish line and a weekend, just a weekend of bonding uh, amongst us. Now, that being said, you can't make it to Austin. Do not worry about that. We still want you to run with us virtually, and you can. And you can still receive all of the benefits that you would be receiving if you came here. So that the includes- The swag bag. The Woo! swag bag. So coaching by me, um, sorry to say. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you're, I, lucky. you're lucky. You're very lucky. What a privilege. <laughs> I've written three different plans for people. So I've written well, so, five so, Can I stop you for a second? Yeah, please. So like, as you know, I've agreed to do this. <laughs> and I'm not doing the half marathon. I'm not doing the full marathon. I'm doing the 5K. But I am, I am literally, I am nervous. And let me tell you all why I'm nervous. And that is because I haven't run in two years, actually almost two and a half years, because I broke my ankle when I was mountain biking in June of 2020. And the, the last time that I ran was literally going to the Cleveland Hopkins airport, uh, trying to catch a flight back a couple months ago to Austin. So, you know, I'm actually turning to Carrie to give me a little plan uh, how to like, and I'm starting now, December, what's the date today? December Today's 9th. The 9th. Yeah. So I've got, I've got two months basically, yep. right? Two yep. months. And uh, I want you all to know that I want to run that 5k and be completely pain-free. And whenever I start running and I know, I know, cause you know, I did this full time for almost 20 years. My ankles, it takes a while for my feet, my ankles, my knees, my, my tendons, my ligaments to get in that kind of walking slash running shape. And so you are going to give me the workouts that are going to get me to that finish line February 19th. Absolutely. And I have written 
these plans, the 5K, a half marathon, and a full marathon plan, I have written them through the lens of somebody who is either a beginner, so starting from scratch, or perhaps somebody like you, Rip, that's coming back to fitness uh, if you've been away from it for a while. So for instance, the 5K, right now we're uh, you know in our second or third official week of training, and we're topping you off at a 10-minute walk, and that's only three or four times a week. And that will continue to build, but the distances and the time on your feet is manageable. And I, you know, we all have 10 minutes and I know that we, we all get in our cars and we drive to the grocery store and we walk around the grocery store and we, we walk to go pick up our kids at school and we do, we walk up and down our stairs. So, so I know that, uh, those of us that are able-bodied can walk for 10 minutes. Um, even if you go to the gym, if it's, snowing where you're at. We have some Team Plant Strong members. Oh my God. They're posting photos on the Facebook group of the snow uh, from Duluth, Minnesota and the Pacific Northwest. So they might have to be on a treadmill and that's yeah. okay. That's Or an elliptical machine if that's a little less stress on your knees. So my point in that is saying that um, these are very welcoming plans. Now, the, the full marathon plan Let's be honest. It's not. <laughs> it's hard for a beginner to go straight to twenty six point two miles. So, yes, it's written through the lens of a beginner, but you still have to put in the work. The five k and the half marathon plans so attainable for almost anyone. And and Carrie, you know, right now we're sitting in about a hundred people that have signed up to do this uh, in uh, in Austin with us. I'm going to throw it out there right now. I would love for us to have a group, a amoeba, uh, <laughs> portobello mushroom of 250 of us basically at that starting line of the Austin Marathon, Half Marathon and 5K and us just screaming at the top of our lungs, Kale, yeah! Woo! So playing strong, baby. <laughs> so if you guys are on the fence, right, get off the fence. Sign up today, make this happen, join us, join Team Plan Strong, and let's show everybody. Let's show Team Beef, let's show Team Dairy, let's show Team, you know, Carnivore, right? <laughs> what 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 a real um a real runner athlete yeah. looks like. And I just saw uh a, a Naomi posted in the chat that she said. She's 69 and she hasn't jogged in four years. And, and I, I just want to say that's okay. You don't have to jog anything. You can walk. Uh, you can, you do not have to run uh, this 5k or the half marathon. It's, it's okay. We're not just recruiting runners. We, I don't care about pacing. We don't care about times. We care about community and, and, and inspiring each other to get some movement in regardless of what that looks like. So yeah, somebody just said, walk, run, dance, roll. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what I would love to do, you know, I want, I was thinking coming into this, Carrie and, and everybody that I wanted to go through um, about eight different reasons why I want you all to exercise. But what I'd love to do instead is, is put that off for another Facebook live. Cause that's going to require a good 35, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I want to be respective of, of everybody's time. So instead what I'd love to do, Bess, Carrie, everybody out there, let, let Carrie and myself, let's take some questions from you for the last next five to eight minutes. And then we're going to let you go on your, your happy Fridays. Cause mm -hmm. you got to get out there and do that five, 10 minute walk <laughs> yeah. or that run or whatever. So uh, what do you say to Jody, Carrie, who says, what about injuries from running? Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I, I would like to know a little bit more about that, Jody. Like, do you mean returning to run after an injury or, or, or you know, is it something that has taken you out of the game completely? Um, what I would say about any kind of injury is, first of all, uh, I am not a medical doctor. So my, my first piece of advice would be let's, let's talk to those orthopedists and those medical doctors and get the clearance that, that you can get on what it is that you can do. Um, 
So that's the first thing. I would never advise somebody to just jump into running if you're coming back from an injury or if it's something that you've never done before. What I would encourage you to do is if you join Team Plant Strong, I'm uh, going to be doing some lives on actual proper running and walking form. Ah. And we're going to talk about different shoes that you can look at because there's a heck of a lot to injury that can get very complex. You know, is it something that is innate in your physiology? We're all very crooked people uh, as I as I slouch over in front of my desk. You know, none of us are completely imbalanced. And so we all carry with us some idiosyncrasies that over repeated use of, of walking or running can exacerbate some, some injuries. So that would be the first thing that we would look at. But some of that can be mitigated if we're looking at your form and we're looking about how you're landing on your feet, what your cadence is of your run or your walk. So all of these things come into play. So <coughs> the short answer, Jody, to, to the question that I'm not sure of what you're asking is uh, I would actually just sort of start with trying to figure out what the injury is and what that limitation is. And then we could build some modifications around that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great answer. And, you know, every, everybody's a little bit personalized when it comes to these injuries, but I love the fact, Carrie, that you're going to address this um, as far as running shoes form, which I think are both so important. And the other thing I'll say is, you know, what, what there's, there's things like shin splints, right. And, you know, I, I know exercises to do to help, you know, shin splints. Typically it's because you're overtraining and you've done a little too much. So I, this is why, what I love about Carrie's program and what I've, that I have over, that I've reviewed is that it, it kind of, it breaks you in, in a very, very friendly manner so that you don't get overtrained. And mm -hmm. instead your body basically adapts at a pace that makes a, a lot of sense. So what about Bess? Bess uh, says, is it bad to run barefoot? I'm in Florida. Uh, I have thoughts on that. Do you have thoughts on that? <laughs> um, uh, in general, I'm not a fan of people running barefoot right out of the gate. Um, because once again, now you're putting uh, three, like you're putting so much force on these tiny itty bitty bones and our feet are where we have pretty much the most amount of bones. Um, so I would actually, if you're, at, unless you're on a soft surface, so it's okay. Like if you're on a grass or if you're in sand to do yeah. uh, some short, some, some like shorter little bursts of running, but to go out on a street or a track and just run barefoot, I would not recommend it at, at all. Uh, we do need some protection for our feet unless you've trained that way for years. Oh, so, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's, I'm glad that this question's come up because guess what book just launched? I think it was yesterday, or the day before. Yes. Born to run Two. Born to run Two. born to run came out. I think it was 2011 by Christopher McDougall, all about the Tari Humara Indians that race in these basically you know, these tire sandals and they're some of the best long distance runners on the planet. And it really started the whole, you know, kind of five toed running craze. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. Nike did a whole line of shoes around, around it as well, called the Nike freeze that I actually loved. And it's a much different kind of philosophy than the, the whole Hoka where you're like running on the, you know, something that's this thick. Yeah. Um, and I think some of that is just personal preference and what works for your anatomy and stuff. But I would tell anybody that's interested, get that book and read it because he's written it with a really amazing coach and somebody that's a, a true expert. Not that we're not, but a very like, this is all they do on yeah. running form and preventing injury. Yeah. And, and like, I just, I literally just pulled the shoe off my foot. This is a brand new shoe. Yeah. I just bought this past week. And so Believe it or not, it's kind of a minimal shoe. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have a major, it doesn't have a huge heel. Uh, it, and this is actually a little more cushion than I'm used to. I'm used to wearing shoes with very little cushion. So I'm 5'1", and I don't know, 100, depending on you know <laughs> the time of time of month for me, it's like 110 to 115 pounds. So I'm little, I'm, I'm a petite person. So I don't necessarily need a ton of cushion. 
The other thing is like my, I have normal arches. I don't have any, I don't have bunions. I don't have any abnormalities with my feet. So I can get away with a little bit more minimal issue without a lot of issues. I know some people, if they transition into a very minimal shoe, they start to get calf cramps and, uh, and, and severe Achilles pain because there's so much pressure without that cushion. There's so much pressure that's just shooting up the back of your leg. So, you know, at this point, I would just say, be cautious um, before you jump into something that's minimal or maximal. Um, I highly recommend people going to a specialty running retailer in order to have professionals there look at your feet. Uh, I, I, you know, as much as Dick's Sporting Goods and, and those big box stores are great and convenient, if you have a specialty running retailer store in your area, go talk to them. Um, that's one thing. And I will say again, in full transparency, Rip, when I first started running and I was still very, I was still heavier than I am now, um, I was scared to run to go. I was scared to go into run uh, which is, which is our specialty running store here at the time, uh, because I was afraid they were going to laugh me out of the store and tell me I wasn't a real athlete and I wasn't a real runner. And um, that could not be further from the truth. So once again, face those fears and walk into those stores what, and, and ask them the right questions. What kind of, what kind of shoe is that? Somebody wants to know, is that Adidas? This is Adidas. Yes, this is Adidas. And it's a very new shoe to me. Um, I'm, I'm, I've run a lot in Mizuno shoes. I'm pretty brand agnostic. Uh, but yeah. I found a, I found a style of Mizuno running shoes that I really liked. They just stopped making them. Um, because there has been a shift in recent years from more minimal shoes to more maximal size yeah. shoes, like the Hoka's that Rip mentioned. Um, but I still prefer a, a, a minimal shoe, not a barefoot shoe necessarily, but something with a little lower profile. I want to, so give, yeah, a couple, I want to give a couple shout outs. we got Lynn S that, that uh, saying, Hey, uh, Naomi, I'm 61 and it's been at least two or three years for me but I'll sign up too. So, <laughs> Let's so do I it. Love, I love, I love the peer pressure. I love the camaraderie. I love that uh, we're, we're making it happen. We got Susan Boyer. I now am considering since we can walk. Oh yes. I am almost 70 and did the runs in my youth. I want to learn to be a speed walker. Yes. Yes. You know what, Susan, absolutely come. We're going to have people like, for example, um, this isn't set in stone yet, but it's probably going to happen. Scott Jurek's probably going to come. He'll be part of the Plant Strong uh, weekend. And he will be doing the half marathon, and he will be running nine-minute pace. We'll have people in the 5K that are walking. We'll have people that are going, you know, 730-minute uh, mile pace. So this is not – I should say there's something for everybody here. When it comes to walking, running, pacing, you know, jogging. So don't be intimidated. This is about us collectively doing something really exciting together and um, and just celebrating, yeah. celebrating the lifestyle together. Yes. And 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 Naomi, um, yes, Naomi, all support is uh it is online via a couple of different avenues. One, we have a separate private Facebook group for Team Plant Strong. So it's a very safe space for those of us that are coming at this from not just all fitness levels, but all distances. So from the 5K up to the marathon. And we have people in there that are not fully plant-based yet. They are on their way sure. and they're using this as a vehicle to, to really get them over a hump. And I saw a, a post in here. Oh, the other way that we are communicating with our team is through weekly newsletters that I'm writing with tips um, and, and ideas. And like I said, you have access to me via email on, on any question that you have, even if it is about my smelly shoe. Um, Do you have to and, sign up? Do you have to sign up? Uh, for Team Plant Strong to get access to your coaching and newsletters and all that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Because uh, Naomi, maybe you answered this, but says, is there a Plant Strong group in Blue Ridge, Georgia, or can I get my support online? Right? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. So we haven't, 
And it, it's a great, first of all, it's a great suggestion. Second of all, it's a great idea. And it's another grand scheme plan of mine, which would, I would love to sort of, you know, filter it out by region so that we can get people together who might be near each other and you can go on walks together or runs together. That's a little further down the line, but, um, but yes, yeah. the, the, right now, the community, as we're building it, um, and as Rip said, we're about a hundred right now. Um, not that many, in, uh, like not a hundred in the Facebook group yet. Cause some people aren't on Facebook and, um, but but right now our goal is to get to 250, and I think once we once we reach that critical mass of of participants, then we can actually start looking at some geographical uh, targeting for for different groups. But um, I saw somebody that uh, where was his? I'm scrolling through the comments. He had a wonderful question about and rip the, you'd probably be best to answer this as well, which is he started with um, plant based nutrition uh, in September and is having trouble with energy levels. Yeah. And you know, that, yeah. So that's one of those things where everything, I have no idea what that means because in order for me to, uh, or, or carry or any of us to, uh, assess, we need to know exactly what you've eaten for like a week. So keep a week long, food journal of everything you've eaten. And that will be very, very helpful. I can tell you that most people, when they transition to this, they're not eating enough food. So they're consequently not getting enough calories. And so they're not getting enough, basically. that That's, what show, that's what's indicating in you that lack of energy. You're just not getting enough calories. And that's because these foods are typically so calorie light that you have to eat almost 30% more volume of the food to get the same amount of calories. And so there's a little bit of a, of a transition there as your body figures it out. But mm -hmm. again, the, the devil is going to be in the details and that food journal. Yeah. Yes. And I would encourage you, please do not give up on this way of eating. Um, do not throw in the towel because you, because you don't feel like quote unquote, it's working for you. Um, it really does come down to small little tweaks. And as Rip's saying, more than likely increasing, yay, which means eating more. How exciting is that? But because if you're not, if you're saying that you're low on energy, you know, it, our bodies run on carbohydrates. That is our energy. And, and so either you're not getting enough, you know, good nutritious carbohydrates, or you're just not eating enough calories in there uh, to fuel the activities that you're doing. And Yesterday in our team Facebook, uh, our team Plant Strong Live, I did a whole hour on what to fuel before, during, and after your training. And I gave examples of good foods, particularly afterwards. And this is a trap that a lot of us fall into somewhat unintentionally was when we go out to do, when we go out to exercise, um, whether it's a walk or a run or a bike or rowing, whatever. Uh, we, we often don't eat afterwards and, and that's a myriad reasons. You know, one, we're just busy. We, we do our workout and then we got to get to work or we got to make dinner. We got to get the kids. Um, number, number two, we don't think about the fact that we've just put ourselves into a calorie deficit. Um, and then, you know, the, the honest to God truth is, and a, another reason why we don't fuel post-workout a lot is because, we are trying to lose weight, many of us, not, not all of us. And I don't want to generalize and blanket that, but it is a reason why many of us, myself included, wouldn't fuel after a workout because mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to get that deficit and see those, see the pounds come off the scale. Well, that is a very slippery slope from an athletic perspective, because if you don't fuel post-workout, guess what? Four hours later, you're, you're chewing your arm off because you're so hungry and that's when you start to make those poor choices of chips and uh, crackers and cookies, especially if you're at the office and somebody's got the candy jar on their desk. Um, so post-workout fueling is so vitally important because it tops off your stores. It helps with your muscle adaptation from that workout. And it keeps you satiated with those energy levels so that you can get up tomorrow 
and do it again. And, and I think that's the missing link that a lot of us have. So maybe that's maybe that's an issue that you can look at um, uh, as far as those energy levels go as well. You know um, what? You know, and I'm glad you brought that up because after after you we work out, and we're talking about typically a kind of a robust workout, but it's so important to um, replenish those glycogen stores within that golden hour, right after after you've worked out when everything basically gets sucked up in the most effective way possible and you restore those glycogen stores. So great, yeah. great, and, great point. Yeah. yeah. And this, just so you guys can see, this was the, the sheet. This was what I went through yesterday in detail on the team plant strong nice. Facebook page. And somebody asked if, if they're able to join the team plant strong Facebook group to connect that is right now for Team Plant Strong members. So if you do sign up for Team Plant Strong and, and you want to do the event with us in February and beyond, trust me, there's more coming down the pike. Uh, that would be how you would get access to some of this. But but let me let me just toss out a couple of, of meal suggestions for people who might be struggling. Um, I've been plant strong now for, for almost 14 years and I have continued to, to perform athletically without any any issues. And so some some ideas that, that I suggested to, to people, uh, and this is mostly post-workout. We, you know, there's a lot of pre-workout stuff in here too, but post-workout, things like um, potatoes with beans or rice and beans. Um, I love breakfast tacos after a run. <laughs> and because I can get like that great base of rice, good carbohydrate, those beans, I can get the salsa, I can get some spinach. Um, I wrote down uh, oatmeal, some steel cut oats with fruit, and you can add chia and flax because what we're looking for is a good carbohydrate and protein combination to, as Rip said, kind of top off that glycogen storage that we burned and and help with the the muscle adaptation and recovery. Um, the plant bait or the plant strong chilies and stews right after a workout. Put some of that on top of a potato or on top of pasta or on top of quinoa or rice. Delicious combination. And I mean, how could we leave out Rip's Big Bowl and the granolas that, that we have as well? Sometimes I'll buy like some plant-based yogurt um, or plant-based milk and I'll, I'll make a big bowl of cereal right afterwards. Um, I love to sprinkle the chia and the flax to get a little bit more protein and those, those omega-3s in there. And um, my energy level is topped off for hours. So those are just a couple hummus and pita wrap with some spinach. Um, those are some of the ideas that I was sharing with our team yesterday. Yeah. So let's take one or two more questions and, uh, and then uh, we're going to sign off. Okay. We don't want to overstay our welcome here. But, um, <laughs> you know, Julie, Julie Hunt wants to know, what is our opinion on using juices to fuel when training? And I'll say, Julie, again, it depends. What is your definition of training? And if you're out there, if you're training for a 5K and you're doing less than, you know, half an hour of training or 45 minutes, I would tell you, I think just water is all you need. I don't think you need the, the extra calories that you're going to get from juicing, depending upon your weight and your health status. Now, if you're like carrier myself, and you're, you know, going out for, uh, you know, you're swimming an hour, then you're going out for a bike ride. If, if you're running for, you know, 45 minutes, you're doing track work. Absolutely. You want to, you want to supplement with, you know, goose gels, you know, juicing some of these different energy drinks that are out there these days that are also plant-based. I'm sure Carrie, you have a list of nice recommendations for everyone. Don't share those today, please. Okay. All right. I, I want I want you to save that for people in the in the community. So we're gonna hold out a little bit on you. <laughs> let me, let, I will say this though, I, if you don't mind, Rip, I will say this as as sort of a to, to blanket yeah. what you just said is that as athletes, I think it's very important that we we look at our fueling in a couple of different ways. Our food to us is fuel, right? And um, I we need to think about what we eat before, during, and after training almost in one silo, and then what we eat the rest of the day completely different. And, and as you said, if we are out there doing these long runs, 
we do need to supplement with, with sugar and carbohydrates. I had a, a person, he didn't, he wasn't mean about it, but he emailed me and said, I'm surprised that you're recommending um, sugar because that's so anti-plant strong. And, and, and it really got me thinking and it's, it, it, I'm not guzzling Gatorade at five o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, I might, unless I'm going for a two hour run, if I'm going for a two hour run right after, but like, I'm, this isn't what we eat in our daily lives. So really start to think about that in two different, in two different ways. And, you know, I'm happy to answer that there well. The website is being scrolled right now. And I'm also happy to answer any additional questions that people might have. If you just reach out to hello at plantstrong.com and, and like maybe in the subject line, put like question for Carrie or something or, or team plant strong question. And that, and that will get sent to me and I'm and, happy to answer questions. And Kathy Farrell Novak is an off, off again, on again, exerciser, didn't start exercising until she was in her mid forties. Uh, currently she is off again. And now because <laughs> of this group, she's going to get back started, which I absolutely adore. Here, here, but here's something I want everybody to think about. So we mentioned born to run the book by Christopher McDougall. Some of the best endurance runners in the world. And these guys, they don't have energy drinks. They don't have juice. I mean, chews. They don't have all this stuff. They've got little Mesa balls, right? They've got water. So, I mean, it just know that it's, they've got, they've got little rubber sandals that they've cut out of old tires. <laughs> so you, I'm saying all this because running is the most basic, simple movement that our bodies were meant to do. I don't want anything to get in the way of you guys starting to move your bodies. You don't have to do fancy shoes. You don't have to do fancy, fancy supplements, drinks, or anything. You just need to get your butt out the door and start walking, start jogging, start running. And you are part of Team Plan Strong. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Please. Yes. Yeah, see, the, 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 oh, uh, the web oh, address oh, to yeah. join is yeah. down below. It's scrolling below plantstrongfoods.com forward slash team. You can read all about it. And this is just the beginning. Uh, and so I would love for, for you to join me and, and lift this thing. Let's get this thing off the ground so that we can like go to the moon and, uh, and take over all of these endurance events. As we say on the website, we're going to paint Austin green on February 9th. We're going to rock out your black out, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am not going to get up and do that dance because that would be creepy. But <laughs> I will show you my Iron Man logo. Ah, was yeah. that creepy? When I, was that no, creepy when I did no, it? No. What? no, you can get away with it, Rip. That's okay. a thing. Yeah, you can get away with it. Woo! <laughs> All right, hey, hey, Carrie, this has been a blast. Best, thank you from the control rooms for helping out here. Everybody, thank you for joining us um, for this this Facebook Live. I don't know if it'll be next Friday, but very soon we're gonna do the second half of this. Uh, All the benefits of exercise with Carrie because we got to get this team plan strong off the ground. We want to pump you guys up. We want you to meet each other in person. And, you know, the next best thing is do it virtually. But um, this is this is a rocking community that you all should be part of. And I would love for you to be part of. Thank you. Thank you. I would, too. I'm one of you. I'm, I am one of all of you. You saw the before picture. Um, I understand how hard it is. And I understand the fear that comes along with starting something that you don't think you're going to be good at. And the problem, you know, the thing is somebody's always going to be faster anyways. So let's just do this together and have so much fun. All right. Over out. Give me a big plant strong fist bump. Boom. Woo. All right, y'all. Have a